Hey oh everybody, Haku here with my live reaction or read through for Omniscient Reader or Omniscient Reader's Viewpoint. Chapters 144, 145, 146, and 147, I've been told it would be the best place to end after four chapters. So again, in the coming weeks, if there's any suggestions you all ever have on like, oh, end it this chapter, just tell me and I'll try to do so. So I'm ending at 147 this week. We're going to do four. I'm excited to see what we uh, what we'll get this time around. We just ended the I was about to say the drama with Yamato no Orochi, but that feels a little bit of a, a light, weird way to refer to it. But the Yamato no Orochi stuff ended, which was huge for Dokja and the others. And I'm excited to see where we go. Do we finish this out very quickly and then go see what Sangha and We Won't have been doing now that the serpent has been slain? Do we still have to really continue on with the small people stuff much longer? We then, again, at some point, uh, I guess Dokja needs to go talk to Persephone again after all of this. So all of that's happening. Um, presumably now, you know, King of No Killing isn't a thing anymore, that raises the stakes a lot because that's one less kind of out that Dokja has, one less very important piece of the puzzle that Dokja has, and he sacrificed that now. Though again, he gets something out of it through the relationship with Persephone now that she's like going to trust him with more, but then, gosh, yeah. We, we have we have so much going on with that. So he's lost King of No Killing. And do we continue on with what we're doing here? I feel like we won't very often. But then after Izumi is gone now, because now that Izumi is taken out, what does that mean for Asuka Ren? I mean, I guess her and Michio just go back to Japan. Do we not see them very much anymore? Does Japan eventually get folded into the Korea stuff? Not really Japan folded in, but do the two of them and some of the others maybe start to merge together? Because eventually you'd think if we're going through trial after trial and more and more people are dying and we're lowering and lowering the number of incarnations, eventually they kind of all get put in together right? Or am I just completely wrong about that? Either way, let's just start reading. I don't want to waste any more of your time with an intro. Uh, so we're starting with you've received 200,000 coins for your achievement. The discussion for the main contributor award is currently underway. And of course, thank you to whoever it was in the comments who uh, corrected me when it was like the nameless... Um, the nameless catastrophe was taken out main contributors and it listed like some of the GTA that kind of group and I was like wait did that mean like what did that mean and they reminded me we saw the same thing before when the guys at the very beginning of the scenario got taken out so any of the like non big king ones it said that for and now we're seeing the you almost forget that the city is tiny we're seeing the aftermath you must be Kim Dogaza, who Michio mentioned. Um, Takashi Kizuki, you know me. His supporting constellation has something to do with the Yamato no Orochi's myth. You had the hidden scent or scenario for Totsuka no Tsurugi. Oh, that's right. Junkyuk must have told you. Okay, so he met Junkyuk. Junkyuk got the sword that way. I never thought you'd actually manage to kill the Sovereign of Eight Heads. You solved a lot of problems for us. I will make sure to repay this debt somehow. Solve their problems. Can you really call it that? Because now they're going to be leaderless. I mean, that's better than having a bad leader who was taken over by uh, Yamato no Orochi basically trying to revive itself through, uh, through Izumi. But still, they're kind of left in flux. Mr. Kim. And not only that, even though, again... They were, it's like, can you really, what's the morality in the world of Omniscient Reader? Can you really call them bad people for trying to kill the tiny people? Because it's like, well, if it's the tiny people or me, sorry, it might have to be the tiny people. Like, is it that kind of, like, would you take that kind of stance? Sort of like with the very beginning of the series when it's like, you're in the train car or you're GTA in the classroom. She killed one of her classmates. Do you have to just say, 
well, I'm going to die if I don't. So it's literally only about survival. It's not about the actual morality of killing another living being. It's sorry, it's only about survival. I'm forced to do it by the scenario, essentially. And by doing that, you are kind of playing by the rules of the constellations. You're giving them what they want. And Dokja doesn't want to do that as much as he can, but even Dokja himself, to a certain degree, has to play along with the scenarios, even if he's trying to, you know, form his own ending, go against them in his own way, and he's done a great job at it. He still has kind of had to go along with certain things to a certain point in order to get here. So it's like, can you really view them as bad people? But... If you were to view some of the uh, Japanese incarnations as bad people, uh, whether they're bad people or not, they've lost a chunk of their incarnations that were important enough to be sent to this world for this scenario. So they've lost some important like manpower. They've lost their leader. So it's like Japan is kind of not in a good not in good shape right now. You would think, Mr. Kim. Michio? I'm sorry about what happened to Izumi. No, it wasn't really your fault. That was... Izumi, the White Demon King, was a hero to him. And I'm the person who killed his hero. He must be feeling confused. Mr. Kim Dogaza? Yes. I would like to fight alongside you in battle once again someday. I think I told you before, but my name isn't Dogaza, it's... And when we meet again, I'll be much stronger than you. No, my name is actually... <laughs> he runs away crying. <laughs> again, I love some of the tropes they've used for this arc. He runs off. The constellation who was born from the sea in the storm has revealed their modifier. Constellation Snake Cutter has taken an interest in Michio Shoji. So assuming since they're the snake cutter and stuff, I'm assuming that's Sasanowo. So Michio Shoji could potentially get a supporting constellation Sasanowo then. Snake cutter. The original owner of the triple S grade item Totsuka no Tsurugi and Izumi's supporting constellation Sasanowo. Right, that's right. That was supposed to be Izumi's, but things had changed. Is he thinking of supporting Michio Shoji this round? And even more things are changing. I like that we got the one guy name dropped and then they're like, okay, now, now we're, uh, we're going to see them much, much later if we see them again. I'm sure the Tokyo Dome won't have any problems, as long as they're there. Constellation Snake Cutter has taken a, er, taken a liking toward you. Episode 144, Chapter 26, Scenario Destroyer, Part 1. Okay, very cool, we're moving into a new chapter. <laughs> we have Slurp. Gosh, I really thought we were going to die this time, says GKA. I mean, what was that thing? It just said a few words, and I wasn't this scared, even when my superiors came to inspect our platoon in the army, says uh, Hyunsun. You seem to be enjoying yourself, Hyunsun. <laughs> and he reacts, <laughs> dropping the cup. M Mr. Yu, I thought I told you to come with my group. Why didn't you do as I said? And then ignoring. W well, help me, Mr. Dokja. Poor Hyun Sung just gets the raw end of the deal. Just gets the, <laughs> the like, worst, like, the worst situation every time. And Dokja just completely ignoring him. Mr. And then... We see you, Sung. It was difficult, wasn't it? You did a great job. Dokja, I didn't think it was difficult at all, says <laughs> Gil Young. I see. They've become very close now. He likes me more. He does not. He does so. You sure are popular with the children. And we have... Is that... a uh, Galemium? This man, he vows. Was his name Galemium? He was one of the first... Wait... He was one of the first people on this planet to fight against the catastrophes. I was about to say people, but then I was like, wait, wait, am I just reading the sentence wrong? We will be holding a celebratory banquet at the castle later. The castle is in the ruins, so it won't be much. But Or the castle is in ruins, so it won't be much. But I'd still like to invite all of you. A banquet? Like a party. 
are they going to actually get to have this? I feel like we haven't really had any celebration, any moment like this for our characters. Every time, it's like when we finished the throne game scenario, which I feel like, you know, what do you think the anime will end on? Will that be the ending if it's one core? Ending with the, like, you know, end of the throne scenario? Is that, like, I don't, I've only read once, so I don't really know what good pacing would be. It's like, do you end there? But even if we make it to there and end with that, when we got that, it was like immediately, okay, now um, people are actually at your throat. People were actually um, uh, kind of planning to potentially kill them. But no, you're all getting teleported to different places and we're starting the next scenario. Then, once we get through all of those scenarios, we meet back up, we're dealing with the catastrophes, we have the 41st regression or 41st round, um, Yusung there, when we get through that, it's the closest they've come to a celebration. They had kind of like one night to sit around and drink a bit. And then that ended up with uh, Dokja literally going to the underworld. And then we jump straight into preparation for this scenario. So they really haven't had a lot of time to just celebrate the victories they've had. And then days left until the scenario ends. The position of the King of Catastrophes is currently vacant. And I'm assuming that's just blank days. We see the celebration. The catastrophes have forfeited the scenario, so the sixth scenario is scheduled for early termination. <laughs> we see them eating together. I was wondering if they were going to make a joke, because like where before they made the joke where uh, Jishie wasn't allowed to drink. I was wondering if they were going to do that again. So, catastrophes have forfeited, six scenarios scheduled for early termination. I've brought all the alcohol we had in the storage as you asked. You must really love to drink. Well, they've been hard to come by as of late. The alcoholic beverages of Peaceland have low alcohol content, so I need as much of it as I can get my hands on to brew the liquor I want. The Constellation Snake Cutter is interested in your brewing recipe. You have him pouring stuff together? And now, I'll add the pieces I got from defeating the er, Yamato no Orochi. The eighth head of the Sovereign of Eight Heads. The seventh tail of the Sovereign of Eight Heads. You know of that hidden piece? Says Yu Jun Kyuk. So, Yu Jun Kyuk has only regressed, what, twice by now? But he's already made it past this. Eventually, we're going to hit a point where the Yu Jun Kyuk that we have for ORV story, we're eventually going to get into new ground for him. I don't call myself a prophet for nothing. Give me your sword. And he takes it. This isn't usually how it's, or this isn't how it's made usually, but I guess I, or I guess it can't be helped. Totsuka no Tsurugi. Why would he dunk a sword into that precious liquor? Your fable endows meaning into your actions. Fables of the Constellation, Sovereign of Eight Heads, and Snake Cutter have been fused. Certain parts of the fable have been damaged due to the fable not being told correctly. Fable of the Amano Murakumo no Tsurugi has been manifested. That's the, uh, is that the mirror? Or no, maybe I'm wrong. Constellation Artifact, Heavenly Sword of Gathering Clouds has appeared. And that's where we end. We get Cliffhung with New Sword appearing. Okay. Alright. And again, that's pretty much completed too. So we're going to be getting a bunch more coins now that the Catastrophes have given up. Plus whatever that bonus reward is. And we're going to get, you know, Persephone's Trust, plus even more coins. I feel like already Dokja's main core team, their stats were probably already fairly high. Like, you can only get so high because of, like, plausibility for whatever scenario you're in. But for their scenario, for the place in the game they're in, so to speak, whether they're, like, mid-game, early-game... Um, their stats have to be crazy high, like his actual close allies. And with all of these coins and stuff, you'd think they're just going to get even more powerful compared to just your regular other ones that aren't participating in this kind of thing. 
Like, it just feels like the main Dokja party is going to be busted compared to your average, uh, your average incarnation. I keep wanting to call incarnations constellations. Uh, but either way, let's go read 145. We start things with the formation of the sword that we saw at the end of the last one. Just glancing through, making sure none of it's different. And now we have, according to legend, Amano Murakumo no Tsurugi was a sword that came into existence when they cut off the drunk Yamato no Orochi's tail. It's a workaround, but all I need to do is dunk it in liquor, right? I'm a little sad that it's been damaged partially. This is mine, and Jinkyuk's gonna take it. Hey, but ooh, we beat him together. I did most of the work. That bastard. I mean, he's kind of right. And it was his sword to begin with. I wasn't really after the sword, but I don't want to lose a constellation artifact like this. And something else bubbles up. Constellation artifact, grass-cutting sword, has appeared. So the Kusanagi? What? Another sword. Names give birth to fables, and fables give birth to reality. Amano Murakumo no Tsurugi has five different names in the world of the Star Stream. In other words, there was more than one Amano Murakumo no Tsurugi. So, that's actually kind of an interesting thing. If your story is reality... So, if your story is reality, the thing is, like... So, Zeus and... Was it Saturn? were basically the same thing, unless I'm remembering wrong. Maybe it was Zeus and Jupiter were like the same thing. They were basically the same thing, just with different names. Or I guess a more easy to remember one is like Venus and Aphrodite are the same thing, basically. Mercury and Hermes, basically the same thing. So I would assume then that even though they're basically the same thing, both of them exist in the world of ORV since they have two different names and there is a slight variation to them. Same thing with like the Norse Odin and Anglo-Saxon Woden. It's like, they're, they're like slightly different, but basically the same thing. So I guess both would exist. So in this case, if you have the sword, but different people with different tellings of the story have different names for it, it just exists in these different states. There are five names that Amano Murakumo no Tsurugi goes by in the legends. So this sword's one of the other four that were only mentioned in name, but did not appear in TWSA. Then, this one's mine. You're fine with that, right? So do the other th wouldn't the other three just show up? Just give one out to, like, Jishie's the swordswoman, and then do with the other two what you will. Let Galemium keep one. <laughs> give him something. Do what you want. Grass-cutting sword. This is the second Amano Murakuma no Tsurugi. I wonder why they're using the really long name for this. Uh, for the Amano Murakumo no Tsurugi, but they're not just calling the grass cutting sword Kusanagi. As long as I have this sword that can slay dragons, there's no need for me to be afraid of any dragon species that I might come across later. Honestly, reading <laughs> reading ORV is just making me want to just go and read a bunch of um, mythological stuff from different places around the world so that I, I'll get the references when they show up. Like, I feel like I'm not the most clueless in the world when it comes to this stuff, but I am also certainly far from the most knowledgeable. Gosh, you two are fighting over some sword? If you're done, can I have a sip of that? But you're a miner. And then... <laughs> her face. Have a taste, everyone. It even raises your stats, albeit only a little bit. It has to taste good since it was fermented using the parts of a constellation, he thinks. Or it could taste terrible because of that. Or it could just kill them because it's too powerful for them. Gosh, how can it taste this good? This is just divine. Then we have Scenario Destroyer Part 2. And it's so weird because in the art they kind of all look roughly the same age. Because they have the same sort of art style. It's crazy whenever remembering that GTA is supposed to be this much younger than the others. Like, Dokja's in his late 20s, I'm sure Sangha is maybe somewhat younger than him, but she might be roughly around the same age. Then, we don't know about Hyun Sung, but he at least completed his mandatory military service and was still in the military so he's probably at least mid-20s if not more uh so it's weird then that jihye is only probably 
anywhere from 15 to 18. Now we have Scenario Destroyer Part 2. Everyone's drinking. We, <laughs> the most we see of Solhua over here with um with Jungjuk. Aren't you having any? I never consume anything someone else has made. Why are you afraid of being poisoned? Because they're not delicious. Let's see how good your cooking is then. <laughs> Doctor grabs one, takes a bite. Surprised. It's delicious, isn't it? Yes, she's saying something? Damn it, I know he's a regressor, but that still doesn't explain how he cooks so well. Did he pick up a cooking skill? It might be the best thing I've ever tasted in my entire life. Then violin music starts. It catches everyone's attention. And we have, oh god, why, why was I forgetting Kyrgios' name? We have Kyrgios playing the violin. Up at the gate, the people start crying. Mr. Kim, and Asuka goes out. Ren, how do you feel now? It's hard to explain. I felt that I never should have given up, or should never have given up. Could some of my readers have imagined a scene like this? I'm sure someone has. Come to think of it, where's Su Young? Well, I told her a little about this world, and she took off saying she had somewhere to be. She's doing some crazy stuff. Did she leave to find the hidden piece already? I'm off, chump. She's so cute. I freaking love her. She is the best character. This suddenly came to my mind. And, like, that is some competition for her to be best character, because Dokja exists. And all the others are really good, too. But, like, Dokja stands out. This suddenly came to my mind. Maybe I'm also a part of a world someone created. And we see all these people that, again, are part of a world she created drinking together. And usually, it's crazy, usually I am not a main character kind of guy. When you see I've done plenty of favorite character rankings for plenty of things, they're pretty much never the main character. The main character is actually pretty much never very high up on the list even. Not only not the favorite, not even very high up on the list. I'm just not really a main character kind of guy. I will typically say that I enjoyed the roles or the stories or the characters of side characters most often or even villains usually above the main character if they're good. Um, but then ORV is different where I'm just like Dokja is so good. Do <laughs> to me Dokja is like if easy number one isn't so young, it's Dokja. Like, those two, as much as I like all the other characters, it feels like they're kind of head and shoulders above the rest. I also really like Be Young, but we haven't seen him in a while. So he's a little bit out of my mind at the moment. But continuing the scene, maybe things like that aren't important in this world we live in now. I'm sorry. Even if someone like that exists, they won't let us know of such things. Oh. I'm jealous of the writer, who has you as the reader. Well, I still don't even know who that writer is myself. I I hate the idea, but I also feel like the most likely idea is that it's going to be a case of Dokja wrote the story himself and sent it back to himself. Because that happens a lot in stories. I don't want that to be how... The, I don't want Dokja to be the author that sent it back to himself. I don't want that to be the case, but I just feel like it's scarily likely. And this reminds me. So I was so excited about um, reading like and omniscient reader and everything recently that I went back and I was like, okay, I'm going to watch through some of uh, Pyro Prima's... Uh, reaction so i went through some of his first few streams and i was watching through the vods and there were a few things that i caught that i um that i'm not remembering at the moment that i was like oh man i really need to talk about those in the intro to my video um so i don't remember them right this moment oh i remember one of them there were two things there was something that the i don't remember what the one was but it was something that the author when they sent something 
to Dokja, there was something about remembering something or not remembering something. I don't remember what the line was, and I was like, oh gosh, is this, is this, does this mean Dokja's the author? There was that, and the other thing I was thinking about is that when Beyond first shows up and they're setting up the game, saying, ah, oh, you have to kill each other and everything, one of Beyond's big things was, you all have been living here, eating, breathing, procreating and you haven't had to pay the cost for it and now we're finally making it free to play is over you have to pay the cost you've you don't know how lucky you've been that you haven't had to pay the cost so it's like to me it's like what is what is the uh what is the cost then you know i mean obviously we're going through this dangerous scenario but if there is some give and take to just being able to live and you know procreate and breathe and everything what is the cost to the universe to the star stream um come to think of it you said this once that you were the one who created peace land but you weren't the one who called all these people here oh that actually i received an email after the series came to an end saying they wanted to borrow the world I created in my story. Borrow your world? This wasn't mentioned anywhere in TWSA, he thinks. I didn't think much of it then, so I told them to do as they wanted. But now that I think about it, all of this happened soon after I received that email. Do you remember any other details? Like the sender's email address, for one. All related emails were deleted the moment I replied to them, so I don't really remember it entirely. But I think it started with T. And Dok just surprised. He remembers TLS123. At, and instead of Naver, it's never. Could that have been, or could that address have been? As a token of my gratitude, I'd like to send you a special present. Could you tell me your email address? TLS-123. It was, wasn't it? TLS-123. Do you remember? Well, I don't really remember. Oh, what is it? Um, she closes her eyes. Is she being censored by the god of the Starstream or the author of what's going on? What did you just say? Oh, whatever she said to him was censored. Yeah, whatever she said was censored. So it's more stuff that is being blocked from him. More stuff that he didn't read that wasn't in the book. What? What you just told me. What do you mean? No way. Personal skill character profile activated. And we see age 31, master of the Nita Nichiryu is her supporting constellation. Personal attribute, creator of Peaceland Legendary and comic artist rare. Uh, personal skills, Kendo 4, Pen is the Sword 4, Plausible Footwork 5, Imagination Stimulation 4, uh, etc. And then her stigma is Nita Nichiryu 3. We have her stats and how they've been brought down, probably because of being a small person. And overall evaluations being revised at the moment. It's being revised. And then her personal attribute, creator of Peace Land and comic artist, is being taken away. I'm sorry, but what were we talking about? Did she essentially just go from being a person to a character right in front of him? Is it that? Because we've gotten past a certain point for her? Or is it that he was digging too deep and she got just censored? Like her, her mind itself got censored. I love that we're getting like, that was a big jump deeper into the overall world of ORV and the existential nature of ORV, but not only a bigger jump into the just main central ORV stuff, but also there was really good character stuff in there too. Man, I like the more ORV goes on, to me, I think it has a start where if you just, I think there was somebody who said it feels like your just generic action manhwa 
but then the further you go, you realize that it's a deeper story hiding itself as a generic action manhwa. But to me, it just feels like at the very beginning of ORV, there is kind of that generic action manhwa stuff. Not fully to me. I think it really starts on the character stuff with Dokja really early. But I think early on, it just like it's throwing things at you and throwing things at you and throwing things at you. But as you continue to go along, all of those things just meld together in such a good way where it all just keeps getting deeper and deeper without being convoluted. Like, there's a difference, I guess, between complex and convoluted, and ORV is complex, not convoluted. So I'm excited to see what we get next. Uh, let's continue reading. This chapter continues starting with the revision that we were seeing at the end of the last one. And then we get our title splash, Scenario Destroyer Part 3. We were talking about your comic. My comic. And I love the lighting and the presentation of all the art. I didn't even really talk about it the past two chapters. But that's because just assume... Uh, just assume that if I weren't filtering myself, if I weren't being censored by the uh, star stream, that I would just, between every panel, be saying, wow, the art in ORV is so good. Just assume that I am filtering myself from saying, wow, the art is so good, between each panel. It was then that she realized that the world had completely left her hands. And then he's getting affected. What was that? And there were red sparks each time. And so so I don't know if that has something to do with plausibility. That kind of thing shows up when there's like a plausibility storm kind of thing or whatever you want to call it. It shows up when the Dokabi are using their abilities. So I don't know 100% what to take it for. Was that sentence originally in TWSA? He thinks. We have everyone celebrating still. Oh, I see. This is the moment when this world called Peace Land. And we see her personal attribute now as comic artist rare, not creator of Peace Land anymore, came to an end. Man. This is the end of the story. We see the shot of the castle within the manga. The final moment in which a story becomes fully independent of its writer. Wow, I got goosebumps. That's such a good scene. Then, where do these stories go once they're done? You've come to know the planet Peaceland. All beings that belong to Peaceland now sense your existence, albeit faintly. The beings of Peaceland begin to write a legend about you. The constellation of the small planet is delighted by your existence. After that, I asked her a few more questions, and even used my lie detection skill. But she really did not remember anything. I'm sorry, I really don't remember. I'm sure I've read it before. I think I enjoyed reading it. I'm most certain that I did. Unfortunately, it's still unclear who wrote TWSA and what it is they want. But I think I know one thing. I'm the author of TWSA. Or I'm sure... Okay, whoa, that was a misreading. Holy shit. I'm sure, I'm sure the author of GWSA wasn't satisfied with how his story had ended as much as I was. That's probably why he sent me the file to his novel before this world ended. So that Dokja can change it and write his ending as the one reader who made it through. Then, I guess I should help fulfill that wish. Ancient Serpent Celestial Blood. Sorry, I'm sure you wanted to join them in drinking too, Hyunsung. It's fine, just leave it to me. Just as I told you, I want you to guard me while I'm asleep. So I guess then he's taking this to put him into a state where he can go back to the underworld. The two of them seclude themselves. You drink the alcohol made using the Ancient Serpent Celestial Blood. The blessing of the greedy snake tests your mental fortitude. This is the hidden piece that even the Junkyuk of the third round doesn't know about. A ritual that can only be performed when the alcohol made from Orochi was mixed with celestial blood. The snake has determined that you have indeed slain a dragon. Okay. A new attribute, eight lives, is about to flourish. If this hadn't existed... 
I would have never given up or a great attribute like the King of No Killing. So is he going to have eight lives essentially then? Done. The preparation for the attribute is complete. So I'll have a new attribute when I wake up. That's one done. But it's the other that may be a problem. He writes out God of Alcohol and Ecstasy. And it's silent. What's going on? I'm not getting anything from either Dionysus or Persephone. Maybe he has to be back on Earth? I went through all that trouble, but there's no one to take me to the underworld. Maybe I should have brought Sangha here with me. <laughs> and the reactions. Father of the rich knight, he writes this time. And now we see the sparks as he falls into unconsciousness. And we're back. You cannot enter the underworld right now. Judge the underworld. Looks like I was lucky enough to not end up in Tartarus again. I came to report to the queen that I've completed my labor. I know. I'll say this again, but you cannot enter the palace. Why is that? I cannot tell you that. Go back. I have summoned you here using the power of the father, but I cannot allow you to enter. I have a promise to keep with the queen. I must go in. You cannot do that now. Go back. What's he trying to pull? I think they're... There is some drama going on with the constellations. No matter how strong judges are, they're nothing compared to Persephone, but seeing how they're being so adamant. Are they both away from the palace right now? He flinches. That is correct. But for what? If Hades and Persephone have both left the palace, something big must have happened somewhere. What could have possibly happened around now that needed the attention of those two? Did they leave any messages for me? Even if they did, why would I tell you? I mean, I mean, what is that response? Like, that's that's your job. That's what you're here for. If you agree to help me, I'll let you have a sip of this. It is that. It's alcohol made using Yamato no Orochi. It's made using a constellation's body part. So what more is there to say? Hmm. I'll leave if you're not interested. And then, w wait. This is to die for. Gosh, it tastes so good. Here is your reward. And he hands something out. The queen has left this for you. This is... Is it Yusung's soul? Okay, the, literally, it's Yusung's soul. M mister I'm sorry. I was too late, wasn't I? Yes, you were. I was. But why? There's still something you must do in this world. I'm not here out of sympathy for her. I just really needed her help. There was something only she could do, since her soul had built up a, er, had built up a story over a long time. What do you want me to do? We cut ahead a bit. <laughs> You're so cruel, mister. You're even worse than the captain in some ways. I'm sorry. But fine. I'll do it. No. I want to do it. It's what I wanted. I want to see the ending of this world this time around. You might lose more of your memories. Do you think you can endure that? I'm not scared. Because I'll trust you'll tell me the memories I'm missing. Alright. She vanishes. Just because a soul leaves the underworld doesn't mean its body is resurrected. And it's also impossible for that soul to settle into a new body when it's been long dead. I wonder though if it can settle into the young Yusung's body, even if young Yusung doesn't get all of her memories, maybe she gets some of her power, some of her story that's been built up for such a long time. Because if its body's not resurrected and it can't settle into a new body, can it settle into what is what is its body kind of, but from a different world line? If led by fate, they could reincarnate. But this soul sinned too many times and will not be able to reincarnate as a human. I know. Be young? Now Be young shows back up. He's watching on. I need your help. With what? Then he holds out the soul. Hey, d don't tell me you're a vessel for reincarnation that only someone of her caliber can choose. She'd been dominated by the story so far, but now... 
she will be reincarnated as a being that rules over the story. Is he trying to make her into a Dokubi or a, or a literal constellation? I feel like being a constellation would be too difficult. Are you going to make me do that? And then that's where it ends. Okay, I'm glad I'm reading one more. I'm glad I'm not getting cliff hung with this. And we still have the recap of these same two. Even though we're we're pretty much at the end. Even the celebration seems like it's basically over. Let's go read 147 and that'll be it for this week. 147 starts with her soul. We have Dok Jem Bi Young. <laughs> His face. Hey, think carefully. It won't be as easy as you think. Why don't you just let her perish instead? Do you want your channel to go down? Damn it. I really shouldn't. Come on. I haven't even tried it before. Looks like an egg. Well, now's your chance. Damn it. And then it is kind of an egg. The soul is put into it. I can't believe this. I never thought I'd conceive a child this way. So be young as a mom. We have Mama Bi Young and Daddy Dokja, and they're going to have Baby Yusung. Then, episode 147, chapter 26, Scenario Destroyer, part 4. And Namun's still here. Huh, mister, what are you doing here again? Did you finally die? Not really. Namun, listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. That thing you're building right now? This is cool, because it just feels like late game even Namun could still be important when we get into, like, the final battle Gigantomachia type stuff. Now, yeah, er, you got what you came for? Yes. Did he finish the bottle I gave him in return for letting me go to Tartarus? I was actually lucky that Hades and Persephone were not in. All I did was tip him off, just a little... But since Namun is quick-witted, I'm sure he can bring about a great change. Now, I'm really looking forward to the Giganto Machia. There's a message that the Queen left for you. The Queen? Yes, let me recite it for you. Incarnation Kim Dokja. I see you've been accomplishing the labors through quite interesting means. Many constellations of the Star Stream have, er, have their eyes on you now. However, not all of them are looking at you in a favorable light. You should prepare yourself. Could Hades and Persephone have been summoned because of me? I have been getting fewer reactions from the bigger constellations as of late, like Uriel for one, and also Uriel. Um, the constellation prisoner of the Golden Headbands disappointed in you. The constellation of the Secret of Plot or er, constellation Secret of Plotter is consoling prisoner of the Golden Headband. I see that those guys are still here. Well, there's no use worrying about that now. What's important is that I don't ruin the stories that I've been building up until now. Then, we have murmuring as he wakes up. Dokja? The crowd's gathered. What's going on? Someone's entered this world through the portal in Korea. An additional participant? Now? I don't know the details myself, but... This way, mister. They look down. Ugh. And they're fried, actually. So whatever's going on on Sangan Huiwon's side is not good. Chung means sub, and it's mean sub. He got messed up. What happened? Dokja, you must not come back. Now we see more of the castle. What on earth happened? And he didn't make it. Jeez. Ren, did something like this happen in Japan as well? No. He might have been attacked while crossing through the portal. But what are the chances of that? Then are the people who left are the people who were left behind fighting amongst themselves? You said that Korea didn't have an absolute throne, right? That's right. Then that could be it, but Japan doesn't have one anymore either, right? Now that Izumi's gone. If a country is without something like the Absolute Throne that grants someone absolute power, there's often a shift of power between competing groups, but we're still early in the scenario, and there are people like Sang Ah Huimon and even my mother in Seoul right now. Unless, er, unless there's a group that has enough power to fight against them, something like that could never happen. 
Nothing certain unless we see it for ourselves. The additional rewards for the main contributors have arrived, just as uh, Jun Hyuk gets here. Main contributors, Kim Dokja and Yoo Jun Hyuk. You're absolutely right. First, let's see what's going on. Additional rewards, we have Moon Wave Folded Fan, triple S grade, uh, Blue Dragon Sword, triple S grade. I guess, will Dokja continue to collect swords or will he let uh, GTA have this one since he already got a sword? Magic King's Bracelet, double S grade, and one A grade skill of your choice. And now the portal opens back. Hooray, there, er, there go the heroes who saved Peaceland. The people of Peaceland are singing of your legends. His name isn't Dokuza or Dogaza. It's Dokja. Oh, it's Dokja. Darn it. Why'd they have to make the lyrics so stupid? Maybe they've been moved because of the skill I chose as my reward. You've managed to protect Peaceland from peril. There are certain skills that are near impossible to learn, regardless of their level. I'll pick number four. Oh, it's not all four of these things, it's a choice between the four. A good skill or a good example would be the say grade skill that you can only obtain in Peaceland. And then I'll pick the A grade skill, miniaturization. And all the people are so moved by his choice. Now that you've collected your rewards, it's time to head home. The people here must have grown on you the past few days. You should say goodbye. We love you. Goodbye. And this may or may not be the last we see of uh, this Dokubi. This achievement will be revealed once you become a constellation. And then he looks back to Kyrgios, who's looking down. I think he's thanking you. I'm sorry. I just feel that way, although I don't know why. She smiles at him. And walks back to the portal. I hope to see you all er, all again alive. And the Japanese incarnations are leaving. We'll meet again, Mr. Dokja, and he got his name right. So we have this parting between them. Should we get going too? And we have Dokja's group. The main scenario has ended. And that's where we end. Very, very good. I really liked the arc. All of that was fun. I guess the there, there was a lot of deeper stuff, especially toward the end of 145, early to mid 146. There's a lot of really like series spanning kind of important feeling stuff. So all of that was very great. I enjoyed my time reading it a lot and I hope you enjoyed being here. So I'm going to go ahead and end this. It's like midnight so that I can go ahead and edit and get this video up. Thank you for watching. Like if you did like the video, comment down there too. Tell me what you thought of this week's set of chapters, my thoughts and reaction. Um, in addition to that, subscribe if you want to. It'd be really wonderful to hit 3,000 subs at some point this year, maybe. I'm pretty close to that, so sub if you'd like to. It would be appreciated. If you want a link to the Discord server, ask. It's free and open for anyone. If you want to follow on Twitter, we can talk there in addition to Discord or in the comments or wherever you want. Uh, if you want to help support the channel by dropping a super thanks, that is very appreciated. But if you want to get something out of it yourself, if you want to get your name at the end of videos, if you want to get uh, One Piece videos a bit early, then hit join down below to become a member. Go to patreon.com slash of the tubes, or a link will be in the description to become a patron. And thank you so much to people who are already patrons and channel members. Thank you so much to Chosen Regular Evan Holly, Magical Girls, Ever Nono Abyss Knight, JA and the D Ban, Chiriton Students, David Langstaff and Folded Ghoul, Slayer Candidates, SG and Stan Cedar, and Pure Element Pate Ardiallo. Thank you so so much for your support. I'm gonna need to update this. There's probably at least one more person I need to update their crowns. Um so I need to do that like tomorrow. But either way, thank you so much for your support. Oh and if you did want to know what I was thinking about the Dokabi this arc would. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.